Today Unity is sponsoring this video, more about them in a moment. And we got something that many people asked for quite a few times and I think it's super cool, which is Stylized Trails. It's one of those effects that you see applied in many games in different situations. It's mostly a shader graph exercise, but I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks to improve trail smoothness. Oh, and by the way, if you want to get your hands on this project and many other projects that you can use in your games, there's plenty of assets, you can do it in my Patreon page, I left the link in the description. So have you guys checked Black Friday sales on the Unity Asset Store? Unity has some amazing sales from time to time and it's the time of the year where you can get huge discounts on AAA assets. I mean, it's crazy the amount of things that you can get from there especially tools and assets that you can use to improve your games. So yeah, I left some links below and just by clicking them you are helping me and you can check out what's on sales in the Unity Asset Store. And I am using Unity 2021.2 with the Universal Render Pipeline. And in Package Manager I have installed Shader Graph. So to visualize our trail, we are going to start with a plane. I'm going to place it in the correct position and the scale is going to be 1, 1 and 0 0.33 in the Z. And rotate it minus 90 degrees in the X. And we are going to create a material for this. So we need a shader. With right click, I'm going to go ahead and create a blank shader graph. Rename it and open it up with double click. I'm going to place the window right here so we can have the plane in the left and in the graph inspector. I'm going to add Universal as a target. This one can be lit, so it's influenced by light, but it's transparent instead of opaque. We are going to leave it at alpha and let's make sure it's two-sided, so basically let's set the render face to both. Oh, and let's also turn on alpha clipping. Alright, so we are going to start with two colors, so we kind of create a gradient from inside the shader. Color 01 and color 02. For the first one, we can select the red color, set the mode to HDR. And for the second color, we can choose a blue one with the mode to HDR as well. And the way we use this is with a LERP node. If we connect color 01 to the A option and color 02 to the B option, if we leave it as it is, the T option will basically blend between these two colors. We actually don't want that, we want to use a gradient instead. Whenever we need a gradient, we can use the UV node. If we split it, and for example connect the R channel, we get a gradient. We can use a 1 minus to invert the channel if we want. And that's it, we have our gradient. Now, we need to multiply this with the main texture the text that we are going to create for the trail. Something like this, let's for now use the default particle. I'm going to show you how to create a texture in a moment. Let's sample the text and connect it to the multiply. And for this trail to work out, we need to scroll to pan the main texture. And we simply need the time node multiply it with a vector 2, in this case main text speed, default value of 0 0.1 in the X, and this is going to be connected to the offset of the tiling and offset node. Just like this. You can connect it to the UV input of the sample texture, and here we go, it's scrolling. And this is the basic setup. Now, Let's fade this right side, which will represent the end point of our trail. And once again, we need a gradient, so we are going to use a UV node. If we split it, we can use the R channel. We are going to subtract something to this. But if we multiply this with the sample texture, as you can see, towards the right end, it fades away. And we can dissolve this, we can add the texture to this, instead of simply fading away. So we need a noise texture, but for the simplicity of this tutorial, I'm going to use a procedurally generated one that comes with Shader Graph, and it's the simple noise. We 
you can control the scale in the inspector, call it the dissolve scale, the default value of 30 more or less, 35. And this can be connected to the subtract node. And as you can see, our texture is dissolving towards the end. But there's a few more things we can do. For example, we are removing too much from the main texture. So we can invert the gradient and add it to the simple noise. So it becomes brighter on the left. And it fades on the right. Okay, so let me just rearrange a little bit these notes. Now, to make this look even better, we can scroll this simple noise. We can pan just like we did for the main text. So let's use a time node and multiply it with a vector 2 that we can call dissolve speed. Connect this to the offset of the tiling and offset node. and connect it to the UV of the simple gradient, and here we go, it's already scrolling. Great! And now before we test this out, let's not forget to connect this to the base color. We can save in the Save Asset button, and to test it we can create a material with right-click on the shader we just made. And with this material we can drag it to our plane, just to see how things are going. And yeah, the background is completely black because we just need to pass some information to the alpha of our shader. We actually already have it down here. We simply need to clamp it between 0 and 1 so we don't get any strange artifacts. And then connect it to the alpha up here. And here we go, much better now. We can play with the scroll speed and the dissolve scale, but the only problem we have now is the texture. It's not a proper texture for a trail. We need something more or less like this. So I'm going to show you how to create one and I'm going to use Krita, but the tools we need are similar to Photoshop and other image editing software. So I'm going to create a new file with 2048 by 2048, a completely square. I'm going to unlock the background and with the bucket tool I'm going to paint it to black. And then I'm going to press B to select the brush and I have this brush right here under the paint panel. And what I'm going to do is decrease the hardness, basically the fade in Krita. I'm also going to decrease the opacity and now we want to select this Bezier curve and press Shift double V because Krita has an awesome feature. We can easily create tileable textures if we press Shift W. Uh, let's not forget to select white for the color. Decrease the opacity again and the size something around 300. Actually, you can press B and while holding Shift, you can increase the brush size. And then you can pick the Bezier Curve tool and basically create a random line, a zigzag like this one, for example and then press enter whenever you feel like it. And now the trick is to decrease a little bit the size and create another line. And repeat this process, decrease the size and create a few white areas now. Because the shader works really well when we got a nice gradient between black and white. So we want to have a few gray values in between and then some white spots. So that's what we are doing here. It doesn't matter if it doesn't look good because now if we go to filters, we can go to blur and in motion blur, we can set the angle to 180 and the length more or less to 150. Blends in together and we have a tileable texture. Let's press Shift W to disable wrap. Let's press B for the brush tool and select the eraser. Increase the size and decrease the opacity because we simply need now to remove some parts. Oh, by the way, turn on wrap mode with Shift W again. Otherwise, we will have some artifacts, as you can see. Yeah, but the idea is that we remove some of this excess that we see around here and then save this with a black background as a PNG 
to your Unity project. And that's it. We have a trail text that we can play with, so I'm gonna assign it to the material we created earlier, and as you can see, this is a much better text than the default particle that comes with Unity. <laughs> so yeah, it's a big plus. And how do we use it, you may be asking, because this is applied to a plane, right? And we got a trail render in Unity. It's not perfect, but we can test it out. Right click, effects, trail, and the time could be one. And now we simply need to drag and drop the material we created. And here we go. It's bright, which you may be wondering why. Well, it's bright because we have this shader in lit mode. It's influenced by the lights of the scene. If we set it to unlit, as you can see now, we have the correct colors that we have selected for the shader. I'm gonna leave it at unlit for now. And yeah, it's really cool to play with these trails, by the way. Really nice. Now it's all a matter of playing with the colors, playing with the speed of the scroll, and finding a nice balance. There's a cool trick we can do where we duplicate the trail we have, we parent it to this one, and we increase the time to 1.5. We duplicate the existing material, but this time for darker values. For example, we can decrease the intensity of this orange, and for the second color we can choose red, dark red, and then apply it to the second trail. Oh, and increase a little bit the wide as well, to 1.3, for example. And if you play with this, as you can see now, we get a really awesome result. By the way, if you see this flickering, it's only happening because they are in the same order in the layer. So I'm going to increase the bright trail to 1. And here we go. Looking awesome. <laughs> really cool. By the way, yeah, the trail render from Unity is not great and there's a few solutions that you can play with. Some are free and some are paid. For example, this guy right here, Isang1, he created a custom trail so it becomes much smoother and we don't have those glitches. There's also Ira trails which are paid in the asset store and they are smooth as well as trails effects which have a discount because it's Black Friday and it's our sponsor, by the way, Unity. But there's still another free version that I've tested out as well and it's very interesting to play with, which is Trail 2D. I'll have the link in the description as well. So yeah, there's a few options. Once you have the base shader, you can do a lot of things with any tool. So as you can see, I've added a few more things to my original trail, like a light and particles, which I actually use the particle system for this one. But I'm gonna show you how quickly you can do it with Visual Effect Graph. So make sure in the package manager you have Visual Effect Graph installed. And once you have it, you can go to your folders and we right click Create a VFX Graph. You can rename it and attach it to the trail. As you can see, if you move it around, the pivot is way up high and it looks strange. You can fix it up here, just like this. Nice. Okay, so let's open up VFX Graph duck it around here and 8 particles per second are enough. We don't need velocity. Lifetime between 0 0.4 and 0 0.5. And for the texture, the default particle is enough, in this case. Let's increase the size with a set size, set to 1. Nothing changes because set size of our life needs to be in multiply mode. And the curve is going to be this one. We got something. Now let's add color. Let's use a set color and create a property. Connect it and then select an orange color. A color that fits with what you have. Nothing changes because set color of lifetime also needs to be in multiply the composition and the alpha composition as well. And would you look at that? <laughs> That's how simple it is to add the head of the trail. And it looks beautiful, I mean, seriously, it's so nice. Then you can add a light, a point light, more specifically. Choose the color of your preference. And increase the intensity as well. 2.5 should be enough. And the range in case you want it. 
And that's it, that's how you create a basic trail, but awesome at the same time. Then you can add some more particles, where you basically simply need to copy and paste this one. Then we can add the sphere position up here and decrease the radius to 0 0.1 for example. Let's increase the capacity to 1000 and the rate to 32. And then we can add some turbulence in the update particle and increase the intensity to around 10 and the frequency to 2. So they move around like crazy. The set size we can say it's random between 0 0.05 and 0 0.25. And yeah, if you want, you can create a new color property. And for example, I'm going to choose a reddish color and increase the intensity a lot. Connect down here. And if we start moving around the trail, we don't leave particles behind because we simply need to switch this from local to world position. And here we go. We are leaving a trail of particles. Of course, you can then play with the intensity with the rate and so many things. That's how I created all of these variations and I think it turned out great. If you are interested in supporting me and get access to this project and many other projects, I left a link in the description to my Patreon page. A special thank you goes to each Patron and for the top tier Patrons, here's a quick shout out. Elak Frost, Alexandru Constantine, Bradford Erwent, Crew Bidubidu, Daniel Hadcock, Dark Kingdom, David Daka, David Mine Lars, Derek Benson, Donald Thompson, Edward Chai, Eric Hudson, FT92, Goblin Plague, Jules Klein, Karsten Mikulkalk, Lil Tsai, Long Tran, Maxim, Mograph Tech, Nat Sims, Oitsk, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Roger Powers, Stefan Zarkov, Unknown Enigma, Verisuta, Sonan Chin, and Ingo Das. Your support has been truly amazing and it's so much appreciated. It keeps me going so I can keep on making free tutorials. So thank you. I hope everyone enjoyed this video and I really hope to see you in the next one. Thanks and bye.